So here I am, just minding my own business, going along my journey, and then people go and ask me questions that disrupt my day. It's totally okay. I don't mind people asking me questions. In fact, I thrive on people asking me questions so that I can, you know, turn them into content. Today's question doesn't come from one person. It actually comes from a whole bunch of other people who have asked me where I get my resources. Where do I get my images? Sometimes I use some stuff that might be a little bit obscure, and I wanted to make sure other people understand where I'm getting the stuff. Where are you getting the goods, Dave? Don't don't worry, I got your hookup. Hi, I'm Dave, and I make things. What's going on guys, my name is Dave, like I said, and on this channel, what I do is I make things, I put them on places where I can sell them, and then I share the whole process with you. And if you're interested in that, then stick around, because maybe, just maybe, I'll encourage you to do the same. If everything goes well, this video will help you on that journey. This video will help you do the things that maybe you've told yourself you're not ready to do. You need this particular image to get the job done, and you're not finding it because you don't want to pay too much money, and I, I got you. I got you. Today I'm sharing my five favorite places where I pull imagery from so that I can use them in my designs. And a bonus one that you should absolutely never ever use. But before I get into it, if you have any anticipation that this is going to be an interesting video, do me a favor and hit that like button because it'll help get, you know, the algorithm moving so that we can get this into the hands of the people that matter. Number one place that I like to get my imagery, scannable books filled with public domain imagery. I have this book called Crap Hound big book of unhappiness and it is filled with all kinds of imagery. Here's the thing. I originally thought that this was all public domain. There are a lot of public domain images in here. The problem is, is that not a lot of it was cross-referenced to see if it still had a copyright on it, but for the most part these images should be public domain. I say should with a huge gigantic asterisk next to it, okay? We'll talk about that more later. But this book is filled with stuff that you can scan and bring into your work. In fact, if you've seen any of my designs on the Etsy page, which is linked down in the description, you can see some of the stuff that I have elegantly borrowed from that resource. That's just one book. There are a whole bunch of books out there if you go on Amazon or search for those things. I will link to this one in the description as well, but there are plenty of others out there that you can find where you can get scannable images or ones that you just take a picture with your phone and then bring that into your design and then use it for your work with that small caveat that we'll talk about in a minute. Number two place that I get a lot of my images, Library of Congress. The United States Library of Congress has an enormous, I mean just a huge collection of images that you can use for free. I don't know if you have to be American to use them, but they're available to any, like I bet you if you're still in England, you could probably still access it, I don't know. But I'm just saying that they are available for free. It's not always the easiest to look through, but if you did some really good due diligence, sifting through all the clutter to find the thing that you were looking for, I bet you might be able to find some really choice cuts. One downside to the Library of Congress is that a lot of those images are low resolution. So if you have to resize, it might not be ideal or you'll have to do some major sharpening and edging and altering to make it look good and just be okay with the fact that it's not going to be perfect. There's not a ton of super high resolution images there unless you're talking about the NASA stuff, which there's a lot of epic stuff there. If you like, if you like space stuff, the Library of Congress has got your back. But the Library of Congress has a lot of good medium to high resolution images that you can find in there. You just, again, you just kind of have to sift through the bad stuff to get to the good stuff. Or be really good at a photo editing program like Affinity Photo or Adobe Photoshop to be able to craft something that looks halfway decent. The thing about bad imagery is you can only make it a little less bad. It's very hard to make it good. Okay, these next three are basically all the same idea, but I'm ordering them in my least used to most use resource. Number three, Pexels.com, and that's spelled P-E-X-E-L-S. Again, link down below. Just like the next two, Pexels is a free-to-use stock imagery website. I don't dislike Pexels at all. And in fact, I actually like them a lot. It's just that as far as these three resources, this is the one I use the least. The imagery that they have on the website is perfectly great. There's some really good stuff. It's often different than some of the other two. And I just noticed that they also have video available. So you can download videos and intersperse them like I'm going to split in here while I talk right now because, you know, just random stuff goes in here just because I have the ability to do it. So Pexels is a great resource for that. The difference between this one and the other two, especially the the, the last one, <laughs> I don't know why I'm being so elusive. The difference is they just don't have quite 
the catalog that the other two do. And in case you're concerned about what the license is for these particular images, let me read to you exactly what they say on the website. What is allowed? All photos and videos and pixels are free to use. Attribution is not required. Giving credit to the photographer or pixels is not necessary, but always appreciated. You can modify the photos and videos from pixels, be creative, edit them as you like. In fact, I think what they're trying to say is please edit them because you shouldn't just use them right out of the box and turn around and try and sell them yourself. That goes for anything. What is not allowed? You can't use identifiable people in the photos and turn them into a bad light. Don't sell unaltered copies of photos or videos as poster prints or physical products. You can't just take this image, put it on a mug, put it on a poster print and say, hey, go ahead and buy this from me. Can't do that. Is anybody notable or any kind of brands that are notable in the image itself? You can't imply that there's any kind of endorsement between those two things. Somebody just happens to have a Coke bottle in the picture. You can't say, hey, this was endorsed by Coke. You cannot do that. You also cannot take these images and redistribute them or resell them through other stock imagery websites. I don't know how that works for the photographers themselves. The, the photographers that upload up here, they probably should have access to be able to do that to other sites if they want to. Uh, but it, you know, like, I don't know, uh, you probably have to look into that deeper if you happen to be one of those photographers. Now, before I continue, I just want to acknowledge that those rules pretty much the same for this one and the next two. Now, the next one is actually the one I use the most, but that's only because it's the one that is just like ingrained in my head to go to first, but I'm switching the position of these two because things have changed in my mind as far as unsplash.com. Of all three of these resources, unsplash.com has the largest catalog of images. There are more photos on unsplash.com than maybe even the combination of the other two. But the one thing that Unsplash doesn't have that the other two sites do have is video. They don't have any video up here, at least as far as that I've ever been able to see. They don't offer that. It's strictly photos. If they want to specialize in photos, that's perfectly cool too, because they do, in my opinion, have some of the best quality photos there. Whenever I do a search, I usually find something right away. But I try to dive deep a little bit because, you know, a lot of people find good stuff right at the top and a lot of those images get cherry picked a lot. And the deeper I get, it's still just really great photography all the way throughout. The only other thing that gives me pause right now with Unsplash.com is that they were just acquired by Getty Images. I have a whole other video that I just put out on my other channel that talks about all my thoughts regarding this whole exchange between Getty Images and Unsplash.com. And it doesn't necessarily put Getty Images in the best of light, but I, you know, you be the judge of this. If you want to go check out that video, it's up there and it's also linked down below. But I'm really skeptical and I'm very suspicious of Getty Images. I don't know what's going to happen with Unsplash after this. I, I, I hope they don't mess it up. I hope they don't change things, but they could. And so it's got me a little bit like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. But that's okay because we do have Pexels and we have Pixabay. Why did I move Pixabay to the front of the line? Why is it my number one resource right now? It's not just because of the whole Getty Images thing on Unsplash.com. No, it's that they have a lot of really great photos and they have a very large catalog as well. They have video, just like Pexels does, but they also have illustrations and vector art and they have music and all of it with the same guidelines as the other two. I'm actually kind of blown away by the quality of the illustrations and the vector art. I mean, it's really top-notch stuff. I mean, there's some really great stuff that's here for free to use. Now, of course, again, you're not supposed to take this and just put it up on a print and try to sell that. You have to take what you get here and turn it into something else. You can't just repurpose Gal Shear's work and use it for your own benefit. Yeah, I'm looking at an image that Gal Shear did. If you don't know who Gal Shear is, uh, go ask somebody. <laughs> so it seems pretty obvious to me that if I needed images of any caliber, of any quality, then Pixabay is gonna be the one I go to first. Also should put out there that there's probably other resources out there that I don't use. The reason I use Unsplash and Pixabay and Pexels first, let's be honest, they are attached to the Affinity programs. You can go into the any Affinity program, designer, photo, publisher, you can go to anyone, go into their stock imagery palette, and you can do a search directly in the app under and select one of those three resources and it will pull up stuff from all three. Now it'll only pull up photos. I don't believe it pulls up illustrations or music or video for any of those apps. So, it, you know, you have to go into the actual website to go check them out, but it's still, it's actively there available in the Affinity program. And I love that. And I use that service 
all the time. And now bonus number six, the one you should never, ever, ever trust or use, wikimedia.org. Wikimedia Commons or wikimedia.org purports itself to be a resource for Creative Commons imagery, which is essentially the same thing as public domain. These images are provided by people to use and the licenses change depending on the image that you find there. You can have some that can be used for commercial use or no commercial use or have full wide open license. All kinds of stuff is put up there. The problem is, is that you don't know where those images actually came from. It's possible that the image that got posted did come from the person that actually took it, but it's also entirely possible that somebody else grabbed that image off of some other licensed website and put it up into Wikimedia Commons and just calls it Creative Commons. If I was ever going to use something commercially, I would never, ever, ever choose Wikimedia Commons as a resource. There's just way too much risk and you probably won't get caught, but I would never want to dance on the edge of that razor. You can if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. That said, there are a lot of great images there. So if you're looking for a resource image that you can use to redo your own art, by all means, hit up Wikimedia Commons all day long. But that also brings me back to the public domain imagery that you find in books like this. They may say public domain, but you may not necessarily know for sure. In fact, there are times where images used to be public domain, but they were re-copyrighted or re-trademarked. In fact, there are numerous circumstances where images have been brought out of public domain and brought back into licensed domain because somebody did their due diligence to re-copyright them. Perfect example of this is Charles S. Anderson images or CSA images. They are notorious for gathering public domain images, altering them, changing them up, adding color and fixing them up and making them their own. And so if you find that public domain image and use it for your benefit and they see it, they will turn around and give you a cease and desist letter like that. I've had a few friends get whacked by that and I don't recommend it. So what do we do then? We follow three simple rules and these go for all of these resources. Number one, alter the hell out of that image. Do your best to make it your own. Don't just take what you see and put it on there. Number two, when you download something, especially on these websites, make note of when you downloaded it, where you downloaded it, put a time step, maybe a screenshot, because there could be a moment where that open licensed image becomes a licensed image through a resource like Charles S. Anderson or Getty Images. They've turned it into a licensed image, but you are grandfathered in because you got it before they did that. But you gotta provide proof that that's what happened. And last rule, most important rule, when in doubt, toss it out. If you have any speculation at all that you could get busted for that image, don't use it. Listen, I'm not an attorney. I can't give you legal advice when it comes to Creative Commons or licensing or any of this stuff. But I have been doing this work. I have been in the art and design world for many, many years. And so uh, my only advice is tread lightly. When in doubt, toss it out. I guarantee you, there's another image that may not be quite as perfect as the one that you were trying to use, but it's still gonna be good enough if you just do your homework. And on that note, I gotta get out of here because I gotta go take my son to the orthodontist after a very candy-filled Easter. I hope your Easter weekend was great, and if you're on spring break like I am this week, um, enjoy the weather or whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you're staying indoors because COVID, I don't know. Family and I are taking a little break and we're going to enjoy ourselves and I hope you do too. Not with us, but by yourself. Well, if you want to see the video I was talking about with Unsplash and Getty Images, go check out that one right there on my other channel. Or if you missed last week's video where I talk about using print on demand for brands, that's right there. That's it guys, I'm out. I've been Dave, you've been awesome. I'll see you next time. Go make more stuff.